They say podcasts are going to replace books. I don't know about that. But I do think TRS clips will assist your learning process. The first is the genome project. Mm. What was it? What significance does it hold? And the second one we'll get to later. Okay. Uh, but the second one is very Black Mirror-esque. Mm. And that's the highlight part for me. All right. But let's talk about this gene mapping, gene hacking. Yeah. Um, I say it because again, Michio Kaku said that in the last hundred years, it could be one of the biggest scientific discoveries that yeah. mankind has ever made. Yeah. And the angle is designer babies. You'll be able to design your babies. You'll be able to say, Nahi, iska hat. Nahi, not iska hat, but iski height itni honi chahiye, aankho, he should be so tall. His yeah. eyes should be colored this way. Yeah. His whatever voice should be like this. Yeah. She should look like that. Yeah. That's the angle. No. So for me, uh, it always starts off with a more let's prevent diseases. Angle. Okay. That is how all health advancements start. Similarly for Neuralink, you would notice let's treat patients of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, seizures. It's never about let's make people superheroes. Mm. That will happen, but you can't sell that. So initially the whole genome product project would be about, let us be able to identify problems before they start. Let us identify all the genes that can cause say diabetes or Alzheimer's. See if they are there or not, when the baby is still in the womb. And if at some point we become advanced enough that we can correct it, wouldn't you? Right. If you know that your baby will have Alzheimer's at the age of 50, and if you can change it now in a safe way, would you? Mm. Probably. Because it's not, nothing is stopping you from treating that Alzheimer's when it comes. So why not prevent it? Similarly for diabetes. So things that are obviously diseases, you will most likely treat. I think most parents would. And then that opens the door to ethical problems. Now, I want my child to be fair. I want my child to be dark. I want my child to be tall. I want my child to be short. Now, these, are they problems? No. Are they diseases? No. Can a parent change it? It's a difficult question because we are changing children as soon as they're born anyway. We are giving them a name. We are telling them their gender. We are sending them to the school of our choice to hang out with kids that we think will influence them in a particular way. We are giving them books to influence them to think in a particular way. All of that is influencing. So till what level is it good parenting? And at what level is it unethically changing somebody's genes? Hmm. So this is a human story that we tell ourselves. Ki idhar tak Iske aage, we are going against God's will. Mm. Till where is God's will? If a child is born, we shouldn't interfere at all then. Jo ho rai hone do. So both extremes are bad. And at some point, we will come to a consensus that either tak, it is ethical. Beyond this, it is not. And the strange thing is that the ethi that line will keep changing. As society evolves, we will keep on re-evaluating what is right, what is wrong. So no telling where it will go, but uh, the human genome project is essentially understanding the whole genetic makeup of a human being. Okay. Let's break down the biology a little bit more. Okay. Why did it take so long to complete this human genome project? Yeah. What was the difficulty? And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're basically mapping out what a DNA strand looks like. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, so if you take out one hair of mine or one cell of my skin, it will be made up of cells. Yeah. And those cells will have one part that contains your DNA, DNA strand. Yes. And a DNA strand is a small physical thing. Yes. Very tiny, smaller Very tiny. than a cell. Correct. Inside a cell is a nucleus. Okay. Inside the nucleus is the DNA. And it's one strand. Two strands. Two strands of DNA. Right. One from your mom, one from your dad. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um... Okay, I, I, one of you them is altered and then one of them stays the same from the parent. Right. So there are 23 chromosomes. Uh, so we have those chromosomes and inside each chromosome, there are many, 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 many base pairs. So that is combinations of uh, amino acids. So you need to know the sequence of those amino acids because in one particular, like for example, if you heard of something called Down syndrome, Down syndrome is when your 21st chromosome, uh, there is a trisomy. So there is an extra copy of that. Now that is a problem. 
So if that is there, then you have chances of getting Down syndrome. Uh, so that is a very simple one to diagnose. So this was known very early on. But if the problem is much more specific and hidden inside one of the base pairs of one of the genes, one of the chromosome, then the diagnosis of that is much more complex, which is mm. why it took so long. And we have still not done yet. The project is still going on. We are still trying to understand where all the diseases are coming from at a genetic level. Because even this is mathematics. It's yeah. a framework for how your body will function when that little cell becomes one full human being. It's yeah. kind of a prediction for the future. Correct. Uh, and based on the different combinations within that DNA strand, I'm sure it'll lead to new um, possibilities and realities. Yeah. Also because it's not always one is to one. It's not that ek problem is to ye problem. Ho because multiple genes will interact with each other. So you need to have this combination of problems to have this effect. Okay. So okay. that increases the complexity. Mm. So it's a very complex problem on a very microscopic scale. Yeah. That's what, that's why it's taking so long. Correct. Okay. And now correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard people say things like, I think they experimented with the uh, part of the DNA sequence, which mm -hmm. was responsible for AIDS or cancer. I can't remember which one, mm -hmm. but when they pulled it out and they made that cell sort of cancer free or that, mm -hmm. that human being that would form from that cell cancer free or AIDS free. I can't remember mm -hmm. which one it was. Uh, it also affected muscular growth. Possible. I don't remember this particular study. Um, it was something but, related to yeah, muscular yeah. growth. It is definitely possible because um, most of the things that can go wrong with the body, it has originally developed so that something can go right. Mm. So if you influence the wrong thing, many times the right thing also gets affected. Maybe in a more positive way. Yeah. Or in a negative way. That's or what they're trying to figure out. Exactly. Okay. So that's, that's the reason why most of these treatments are difficult. So, um, like for example, if you have a disease called rheumatoid arthritis, for example, so that is where your joints get affected because your immune system is attacking itself. Mm. Your immune system attacks our own body. Now to treat that, you have to give medicines to shut down the immune system, right? Because the immune system was misbehaving. But the immune system developed for a reason to fight infections. Now that you've shut down the immune system, infections can come. In. This give and take is a part of every medical treatment. You know, okay. so th that will happen here also. In this domain, one last question mm -hmm. before we move on to the final leg, mm -hmm. which is that when you actually want to alter a DNA sequence, mm -hmm. is there some technology I'm assuming? There yeah. is, what is that technology? It's like a machine? The it's latest one is CRISPR. Uh, which is a pretty cool technology. It's literally that you go in and at a molecular level, you can select, it's like cut and paste. So you say that out of this whole sentence of genes, I don't like these three words. So let me go in, cut it off, take it out and put in another three words that I liked. Which is how you can alter the height. Yeah. Uh, the look I mean, of the baby. Yeah. Oversimplification. But yeah, technically you can, if you have cracked the code to that level, you can change snippets of somebody's genetic sequence and technically change who they are. What's the engineering of CRISPR? Is it a, is it like actually two no, scissors? No, no. It's, it, these are chemical scissors. So there are okay. chemical molecules that you can add to the gene and then it can go in and do that. Wow, this is deep biochemistry. Yeah. And all. Wow, man. And the beautiful thing about CRISPR is that you don't need a huge lab to do this. Apparently, the technology has already evolved to a point where you could do it in a small lab. Like every city or every village could have a CRISPR lab. So this is actually a win of the world of chemistry. Yeah, a huge one. I think uh, it won the Nobel Prize. I forget which year, but yeah. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one last okay. uh, round of discussion. Mm -hmm. Again, from that Michio Kaku podcast, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend you check out that person's work. He's... Yeah. Uh, Vijit Chavda. <laughs> like he's a astrophysicist who has knowledge about a lot of subjects. Yeah. They asked him that, uh, what's the most fascinating technology in recent times that you love? He mm. spoke about this CRISPR mm. and uh, the genome project. And they said that after you pass away, very soon after you pass away, what would you be excited about? So mm. he said that in the same way that DNA has started to get mapped completely, they are trying to map the human brain as well. Mm. Uh, now the human brain is made up of neurons. What if you can 
represent each of those neurons using a transistor right okay i don't know how to explain a transistor in layman's terms because i don't know utna about transistor i forgotten mm. i mean i wasn't a good engineering student <laughs> honestly but think of it in the same way that you think of a neuron a cell mm. that can pass electricity from one side to another right so say if i have to take ranveer's brain and represent it and recreate it using transistors that fill up a big cricket stadium mm. okay mm. now maybe this will take years to create it will occupy yeah. a lot of space etc maybe it'll be as big as bandra all sure. of bandra will all my brain will like be there sure. in in physical form mm. now once you have that brain network and you fire electricity from one side and switch it on mm. the question he raised is does that become a conscious being mm. does that brain give rise to conscious being mm. say now rather than just the brain occupying bandra what if you build a robotic body mm. with that brain inside with a functioning liver etc yeah. whatever does that become a massive giant or building you wouldn't need a liver um in fact the interesting thing is that you wouldn't need any of the other organs just a brain and a khali badan just a brain <laughs> and something for movement okay because essentially that's what you are mm you are a brain that can move your heart exists to pump blood into the brain which a robot will not need mm your lungs exist take in oxygen so that it can oxygenate the blood to give to the brain which your brain would not need liver is to digest food which you don't need kidneys to put out urine which you don't need mm. so your whole body all of your systems will be unnecessary if you have a robotic brain mm. right it's a non organic brain it's not a biological brain so you don't need any of that it could literally be a brain on wheels for movement his further question in this same domain is see this is likely going to happen it's a matter of computers uh, becoming faster okay uh, the reason that i don't think it will happen is because it's not just about mapping each individual neuron it is also about figuring out how each individual individual neuron is connected to each other which is extremely difficult okay extremely difficult because if it's difficult to map 1 billion neurons to 1 billion transistors imagine how difficult it is to figure out how those 1 billion transistors are connecting to each other over 1 trillion synapses look think of the logistics of that and it's not even that it's a one is to one connection it's that if a neuron a is talking to neuron b for some reason because neuron a is talking to neuron b neuron c can't talk to neuron d so the whole loop has so many negative feedbacks positive feedbacks and you know back channels that uh, it is the communication that makes the difference our neurons are actually very very similar but the connections are different can i play devil's advocate sure go ahead let's talk about the past technologies we've spoken about in this podcast itself hmm. we spoke about the high quality mri machine hmm. that maps out your brain then that uh, cross section yes now i'm sure those technologies will also advance yeah barely 3d printing will also advance boom you combine the two and you have yeah <laughs> deeply connected I, yeah i'm i don't think it is um, impossible in mm. fact i think it is inevitable if you're going to say infinite time right okay so fair if you say 500 years i would say yeah it's it's possible to map mm. out a human brain so that's what i think uh i also think that our understanding of brains and all is increasing so much and these other tertiary technologies which are unrelated to the brain but can be applied to like 3d printing right like those powerful scans right. all that's also going to advance and i just i i would like to believe that the human race is at the brink of technological revolution yeah we are in the midst of one we are in the midst of one yeah. uh we don't realize it because it's happening around us but um Yeah, we are in the midst of a huge technological boom that is only going to get exponentially quicker. Yeah, and it's terrifying mm. and exciting. <laughs> so the the last thing that Michio Kaku brought up about this concept that if you can take a copy of your own brain mm. and build it in the real world using metal, mm. um, it's likely that that will be a great home for all the data that's already running in your brain. Mm hmm. Interesting. Because your memories are also a big connection of uh, neurons. All that's already there in yeah. that metal. Is there any way to transfer your own electricity there? 
is that called transferring consciousness is that the black mirror episode where they upload their consciousness onto a computer so it is technically possible to take a screenshot of who you are and map it onto a brain into a artificial brain but every time you experience a new situation those neurons are changing mm. now can those transistors can those metallic wires have the capacity to automatically unhook themselves and hook onto another one wow can those transistors have the capacity to divide into new transistors because that's what the brain is doing so even if you map ranveer today into a robot 5 minutes later you guys are going to be different mm. because that ranveer is going to remain ranveer of today and you will be different in 5 minutes mm. so evolutionarily you are still at an advantage mm. and this is where i bring in stem cells <laughs> <laughs> yes so when the day we can come up with biological organic computers ah. we have a chance of replicating our consciousness onto a computer and biological organic computers are a combination of all these technologies we just spoke about correct because biological organic computers are what we are mm. so basically we are trying to replicate ourselves and if you think this podcast was fun you should check out the others even the hindi episodes we've done so currently the best way to create a biological organic computer is to have sex <laughs> <laughs> which was the topic for our last episode it's about 1 am dr sid body of crazy dude. episodes again crazy how does it feel at the end of this uh, brain <laughs> sex situation <laughs> insane man insane <laughs> we have um, we have we've talked about too many intellectual things without getting too tired mm. so i i love that i love the vibe that you've created you're a great podcaster man no oh, thank you bro I thinking of switching for... it off <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> maybe maybe i'll 3d print my own brain <laughs> <laughs> and make that that run we do the international gig <laughs> dr sid warrior thank you thank you for having me man this was a Pleasure. lot of fun thank you for watching this clip if you want to learn more about this topic we've curated a playlist just for you and here's a link to the whole episode